In this uh, video, we're going to take a look at different types of loops and see if we can tell how many times a particular loop is going to run. So let's start with this for next loop. Um, this loop is being controlled by this variable count, right? And count has an initial value of 1 and count will have the final value of 5. Uh, so when this loop runs, each time the loop runs, this next statement here uh, will change the value of count. So if we take a look at this loop, the final time the loop is going to run, what will be the value of count? The value of count will be 5. So when, this, when the value of count is 5, this loop is going to run one final time and then this statement next is going to change the value of count from 5 to 6. So eventually when this loop stops is when the value of count becomes 6. So how do we, how can we tell how many times this loop is going to run? We're going to take this value when the loop stops and we're going to subtract the initial value of count from it. So this loop is going to run five times. Let's take a look at this loop. I think you can figure it out now. The initial value of count is 13. And what is the final value for which, uh, for which this loop can run? When the value of count is 55, this loop is going to run the last time, the final time. And when it comes to this next statement, this next statement will change the value of 50 count from 55 to 56. So this is the stop value. This is the value where this loop is going to stop, right? So how many times is this going to, uh, how many times is this loop going to run? 56 minus the initial value of count, which is going to be how much? I think that's 43. All right, next up, we're going to take a look at some examples of the repeat until loop and see if we can figure out how many times each of these loops is going to run. So let's start with this um, example first. If I was to put this into words, then we can say that this loop is telling us to keep running until the value of x becomes equals to 5, right? This is the condition. Okay, in case of a repeat until loop, we know that this is the initial value of x and basically this loop is being controlled by um, x, right? So the value of x determines how many times this loop is going to run. So uh, x has an initial value of 0, each time the loop runs the value of x changes by 1 and this is... Uh, the condition uh, so this is the this is the final value um, till which this loop is going to run right when the value of x becomes equals to 5 this loop should stop so for a repeat until loop what we can do is we can uh, take this final value right when the value of x becomes equals to 5 this loop is going to stop so this 5 is the stop value right this loop, loop will keep running until the value of x becomes equals to 5. Basically, that means when the value of f x becomes equals to 5, this loop is going to stop. So, 5 is the stop value and the initial value of x is 0. So, this loop is going to run 5 times. Let's take a look at this code now. Here, we are trying to say that keep repeating until the value of x becomes greater than or equal to 5, right? So even when it becomes equals to 5, this loop is going to stop, right? So in this case, it doesn't really have to become greater than 5. Even if it becomes equals to 5, this loop is going to stop, right? So what is the stop value in this case? The stop value is 5. So this loop will keep running, but when the value of x becomes equals to 5, this loop is going to stop, right? So um, even though it says greater than, so either the value has to become greater than 5, the loop is going to stop, or even if the value becomes equals to 5, this loop is going to stop. So the stop value is 5, the initial value of x is 2, so this loop uh, is going to run 3 times. Always make sure that, you know, uh, before you do something like this, always make sure that 
uh, this equation x equals x plus 1 um, is inside the repeat until loop. So that's a check you need to do, right? Because each time the loop runs, the value of x changes by 1. Only then we can do this calculation. So always check this, okay? All right. Next come to this loop. Okay, what is this loop saying? It's saying that keep re keep running until the value of x becomes greater than 5, right? Until the value of x becomes greater than 5. By the way, please note that here for a repeat until loop, we are using this word becomes. So it has to become greater than equal to 5 or uh, greater than 5, you know, it has to become equal to 5, it has to become greater than equal to 5. So we are using this word becomes here, right? So x has to become greater than 5 and so until then this loop is going to run or in other words what we are trying to say is that keep uh, running, so when, when the value of x becomes greater than 5 then this loop is going to stop, right? Uh, so greater than 5 would be what value, right? Each time the value of x is changing by 1, right? So greater than 5 would be what value? That would be 6, right? So the stop value in this case is going to be 6. The initial value of x is 0. So this loop is going to run 6 times. Okay, let's take a look at this one. I think this one is easy. What we're trying to say here is that keep running until the value of x becomes greater than equal to 5. Okay. Um, so greater than 5 this loop is going to stop or even if the value of x becomes equals to 5 this loop is going to stop. So the stop value is 5. The initial value is 0. So 5 minus 0 would be 5 right. But this is not the correct answer. Why? Because I told you to always take a look at uh, this equation right. This equation is doing what? This equation is changing the x value of x by minus 1. So the first time the loop is going to run, this value becomes minus 1. Next time the loop runs, the value of x changes to minus 2. This value of x will keep decreasing minus 3, minus 4. Each time the loop runs, the value of x is changing by minus 1. So it's going in the other direction. Rather than the value eventually becoming equal to 5 or greater than 5, this value is going in the other direction, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. So the value of x will never become equal to 5. This loop will run infinite loop, infinitely. So this is an example of an infinite loop. This loop will never stop. Alright, so let's solve these two loops. Um, how many times is this loop going to run? What we're trying to say is keep running until the value of x becomes greater than or equal to 5. So even if it becomes equal to 5, this loop is going to stop. So the stop value is 5 and the initial value of x is 0. So 5 minus 0 would give us 5. So this loop should run 5 times. But let's take a look at this equation. x is not changing by 1 every time the loop runs. So this equation is not going to work as such. We, we have to mentally figure it out, right? First time the loop runs, the value of x becomes 2. Next time the loop runs, the value of x becomes equals to 4. Next time the loop runs, the value of x becomes equals to 6. And now that x has reached a value of 6, after running 3 times, the value of x has become 6. Therefore, x has become greater than 5, so the loop should stop. So in this case, the loop is going to run 3 times. So this formula, we are only going to apply if the value of x changes by 1. Okay, let's take a look at this one. All right, keep running until the value of x becomes equals to, it, it becomes less than or equal to 5. So, so it will, what's the initial value of x? The initial value of x is 10. So each time the loop runs, the value of x is changing by minus 1. So it's going to be, it's going to become 9 the first time the loop runs, then it's going to become 8, then 7, then 6, then 5, right? So first, we're going to reach 5. So as soon as it becomes 5, it doesn't have to become less than 5, because it's going to become equal to 5 first, right? 
nine eight seven six five right each time the loop runs the value is changing by minus one in this case uh, the stop value is five the initial value is ten right and and the value of x is changing by minus one so we are eventually going to reach this point right so we can use this equation and the answer comes out to be minus five we don't care about this minus sign really but basically this loop is going to run five times all right let's take a look at um, some while loops the first thing i want you to note is that we're using the word is here so what we're trying to say is keep running while x is less than equal to 5 which basically means what as long as x is less than 5 or as long as the value of x becomes equals to 5 this loop can run all right so but the moment the value of x is uh, you know it it becomes greater than 5 so as long as it is less than 5 or equal to 5, right? Even if it's equal to 5, this loop is going to run. Okay, so in this case, the stop value is going to be what? The stop value is going to be 6, right? Because uh, because if, even if it's 5, while x is 5, this loop is going to run. While x is less than 5, this loop is going to run. But as soon as the value of x becomes equal to 6, this loop is going to stop. So the stop value is 6. The initial value is of x is 1, right? So this loop will run 5 times. And remember, inside the loop, do check this condition, okay? x equals x plus 1. So we are moving in the right direction because the first time the loop runs from the value of x becomes equals to 2. The next time the loop runs, the value of x becomes equals to 3. Remember, we started when x had a value of 1, right? So first time the loop runs, x becomes 2. Next time the loop runs, x becomes 3. Next time the loop runs, x becomes 4. Eventually, this loop is going to stop because, you know, we are moving in the right direction, direction 2, 3, 4, 5. Eventually, x will become equal to 6 and this loop is going to stop, right? Okay, let's take a look at uh, this one. So what is this loop saying? While x is greater than or or you can say while x is equal to 5 right greater than 5 or is equal to 5 remember the keyword we are using here is is while x is greater than 5 this loop will run or while x becomes while x is equal to 5 this loop is also going to run okay so let's check the uh, conditions here right the starting uh, value of x is 1 right that this is the starting value and inside the loop the value of x is changing by 1 so this becomes 2 then it becomes 3 but hey hang on a second here this loop will run while x is greater than 5 or it is equal to 5 what is the value of x here the initial value of x is 1 which means what this loop is not going to run because the initial value of x is 1 where and the loop requires x to have a value at least equal to 5 or greater than 5 only then this loop is going to run so this loop will never run this loop will never run okay let's take a look at this one all right what do we have here x has an initial value of 5 and uh, this loop will keep running while x is greater than or x is equal to 5. So, why uh, not 5? This should be 1. Okay. So, keep running while x is greater than or x is equal to 1. Okay. Uh, so, let's see. x has an initial value of y uh, of 5 and inside the loop x is moving in the right direction. Because first time loop runs, x becomes x minus 1. So, x becomes 4, then it becomes 3, then it becomes 2. It's eventually going to reach this point, right? So, we are heading in the right direction, which means this loop is going to run. So, the initial value of x is 5, right? And the stop value is what? The stop value is 1, right? While x is 1, this loop is going to, this, this loop is going to run. 
and uh, while x is greater than 1 this loop is going to run so the stop value becomes 0 not not 5 sorry not 1 so as soon as the value of x becomes 0 this loop is going to stop because it's going to run even if the value of x is equal to 1 and remember we are decreasing from 4 to 3 to 2 each time the loop runs the value of um, x is decreasing the final time the loop runs the value of x is going to be 1 right and then it's going to become 0 so our stop value is 0 and our initial value is 5 so 0 minus 5 would give us minus 5 we don't we don't really care about this minus but basically this loop will run 5 times all right so how many times is this loop going to run well this loop seems to be different right the loop is being controlled by x and inside uh, the loop we do not have an equation like x equals x plus 1 rather each time the loop runs uh, the value of x is being provided by the user remember we are using an input statement here so the user is going to type in a value of x x is controlling the loop right we can see here this basically means while x keep running while x is not equal to minus 1 while x is not equal to minus 1 what is going to be the initial value of x we don't know because the user is going to input the initial value of x this comes from the keyboard so we don't even know whether this loop is going to run one time or even if it's not going to run at all so keep running while the value of x is not equal to minus 1 but we don't know if the user is going to input minus 1 or 2 or 3 it's up to the user right so this basically is a user control loop this is a user control loop we cannot tell how many times this loop is going to run because each time so there is an input of x first and then you know we check whether x is not equal to minus 1 so if the user typed in a value which was not equal to minus 1 this loop is going to run and inside the loop we are once again taking input from the user so once again the value of x is being provided by the user and we don't know what that value is right so we can't be sure as to how many times this loop is going to run so we cannot tell how many times this loop is going to run this is an example of a user control loop where the user inputs a value of x which basically decides if this loop is going to run another time or not okay these are a few more examples of user control loops if you see x has an initial value of 0 and what we are saying is that while x is not equal to 1 if while x is not equal to minus 1 while x is not equal to minus 1 this loop will keep running okay and inside the loop what are we doing we're doing uh, an output right and then you know we we're taking the value of x from the user again so this is a user control loop this is a user control loop so we don't know how many times this is going to run how about this repeat until loop once again you can see that the uh, this loop will keep running or keep repeating until the value of y becomes equals to it becomes equals to not x but y until the value of y becomes equals to yes right so as long as the user you know and and it, it, it's up to the user because the user is inputting the value of y so we don't know when is the user going to finally input this value yes through the keyboard so we don't know how many times this loop is going to run so this is also a user controlled loop we don't know how many times this loop is going to run you can take a look here also once again until y becomes equals to 1000 this loop is going to run but who's giving the value of y the user is giving the value of y so this is a user control loop we don't know how many times this loop is going to run by the way in the exam uh, this may be mentioned as a rogue value they can say you know the loop stops when y has this rogue value of yes basically ignore this word basically what he's trying to say is when y becomes equals to yes then this loop stops so this you know you can also say this is a rogue value in user control loops we call these rogue values so and when y value of y becomes equals to 1000 this loop is going to stop so the keyword this word rogue value should not 
disturb your concepts you know even if you see this term in the exam uh, you should be confident enough hopefully uh, you've understood the concepts